Hey, and welcome to the podcast, Connected with Melissa J. Scott. And today we are speaking about finding your true voice, which is pretty interesting because most people think, yeah, I've got my true voice, but I'm talking about really having a voice that is uniquely yours, something that's very authentic to you and not being afraid to share it with a wider world. And that could be when you're doing Facebook lives or presenting or making video, you know, something where you're actually feeling a little vulnerable and sharing your knowledge with other people. So that's what I'm talking about when I say authentic voice. So I hope you tune in and really enjoy this one. It's a goodie. Today is a really interesting topic and it's very relevant, which is all about finding your voice, speaking your truth and being heard as an individual, as a business owner, as a business leader, and as a human, just as in, as in a, you know, engaging person with something of value to say. So, so often this is what happens to me when we go to clients and we say, you know, they, they want to build their brand. They want to get in front of more people. They want a bigger audience. They want to fill um, up their programs or they want to just get more clients. I want to get more leads through the door. And it's, and I sort of say, well, I think, you know, you need to have a blog or you need to have, uh, you know, do a, a vlog, have your own YouTube channel. You need to maybe Have you thought about having a podcast? Have you, do you want to do interviews? Do you want to be a guest on somebody else's podcast? You know, and back in the day when we actually could do presentations, I'd say, do you want to speak live? You know, that's one of the best ways to get exposure. And, and quite often the answer was like, no, I don't want to have to do any of that. I just want more clients. Can I just put an ad out? Can I just do Facebook ads? Can, you know, and it's always hiding behind the brand, hiding behind the company, hiding behind the glossy exterior of something that they could control. And and this is the whole impetus for me of what connection marketing is all about. It's about helping people find their true voice and to be really content for people to hear what they have to say, particularly if they're in an industry where they can really help others or they have an opposing opinion to other people in that industry. It's really, really important that you aren't shy about making your voice heard. And people tend to feel like that being heard means that they're being pushy or they're being... um, over the top or they're, or they're putting themselves too out there and exposed and maybe they're going to get criticized. But having a, having a voice just means you actually stand for something and you have your own ticker and your own, you know, your own input into your own life. And people find that really attractive and really appealing. So all week I've been coming to you live. I'm doing Facebook lives, Instagram lives. I've been videoing them and then I'll be like putting them out as a podcast. I'll be stripping them back and doing an intro and outro and, and creating podcasts out of this. I'll create vlogs out of this. And it's very much been my opinion, which can be at odds with other people's opinions. And I find that really cool. I think that's absolutely what you want to be as a business owner, or a business leader. You need to have that conviction. And so when I talk to people about finding your own voice, That's what I'm talking about. So we're talking about having the confidence to find your own voice. And if you do struggle, you know, if you do struggle at saying that you are the expert in your industry or you're expert at the the select things that you know that you do in your industry, then you really need to go back in your childhood and have a look at where this is coming from. And straight away, people go, oh God, no, seriously. But But this is what happens is our personality comes from the first seven years of our life. And so much weird shit probably happened back then. That was a long time ago, if you know, I'm approaching 50. So that's a long time ago. And and the way we're raised really does have an impact on the beliefs that we carry into adulthood. Unless you're a particularly conscious adult, you've already done all the work, which is great. You know, kudos to you. But most people haven't done all the work. They're not highly evolved and they're reactionary. And so getting in front of a video camera or getting yourself into a Facebook live or, you know, even putting out a blog with your personal opinion can make people feel really uncomfortable because we've spent a lifetime of pulling ourselves back and and being good being the good person because we want to be liked and you know I've talked to you a lot about connection marketing connection is really interesting because that's how we've survived connection is one of the most basic human needs on the planet it's actually imprinted in our DNA because Back in the day when we were primitive people, if we weren't connected as tribes, we had a far less chance of survival. So it only makes sense that now, you know, later in life, we still need, later in the, you know, era, we still need this physical and emotional connection to other people. But it's interesting, we live in different communities. We don't live in 
perfect little tribe scenarios. We live in our smaller, smaller types of families and, and a lot of people live alone. So it is easy to feel disconnected and to look for connection in other in other ways. So ways that people can look for connection actually can be through, you know, watching too much TV or eating is a big one or buying shopping online is a big one where people are doing that excessively addiction to relationships all kinds of different addictions to anything you know god substance alcohol um relationships i said that before these are all ways that we strive and look for connection when really we should be probably looking back into ourselves and thinking, well, am I connected to myself? Am I actually connected to who I am? Do I know who I am? And do I actually therefore know how I want to communicate and find my voice to be able to speak out there to the general public with confidence and with conviction and to know in all sincerity, this is who I am. This is what I believe in and this is my value that I project out there to the world. And so that's what I mean when I say find your voice. And I read a really interesting article the other day on Facebook or no, actually I think it came to me via email by somebody who I really respect. She's a really well-known podcaster and she's frustrated by that term find your voice. But I feel like she's taking it too literally because uh, when we say find your voice, it is just a metaphor for find your inner voice, your inner truth, your inner beliefs, and then have the confidence to project that out there. And what's really interesting though is that for a lot of people, and I see this right now, I've got a beautiful business colleague that I know, and this has happened to myself for many decades, have had a tremendous a lot of problems with our voices and they literally go. They literally, I spent many for about a decade, I was in and out of, of terrible troubles with nodules and the way I speak is I push and I force and I project because, and this whole week that I've had has been a really tough week. I'm quite tired, you know, because I'm doing all these presentations. My voice is raspy and it's strained and it's because day after day I keep turning up and showing up and trying to find my voice, find my truth, speak my truth and it can be very vulnerable and it brings up a whole lot of weird feelings for you and if you've got stuff there that's unresolved, like at the end of this week, I will go and do a whole lot of journaling and meditating and exercise and rest to, you know, cope with this whole big purge <laughs> of me sharing my opinion on everybody because it still doesn't come 100% naturally. I still feel vulnerable when I do these big shares. And I feel like I want to share that with you guys because whether you're watching this in real time, you're watching this later, because that's, that's the truth. And being a business owner means we have to push through these vulnerable feelings and do it anyway while we're working ourselves out and working on our inner child and why we have these feelings. I can share with you where some of my hair trash comes from. And I think a lot of women could relate to this is that particularly women. And, and I know boys cop this a lot too because boys are so physical. And sadly, I think I might even have said this to my kids too, which is a real shame. Um, but there's things like, you know, when we go to someone's house, be quiet, be well behaved, don't blurt out stuff. You know, when you're in your classroom, put your hand up, ask to be spoken to. We grew up in a country town where it was very, very, very important to our, our, our family and to the people around us about reputation was everything. How do people perceive us? Don't put a foot out of line for fear of being, um, standing out fear of standing out and then you know the repercussions of what comes with that really really interesting so you know we're dealing with a lot of that head trash and I do um, a thing called kinesiology which is where your body actually has all of the answers stored inside of it what is going on in your subconscious and this is the stuff you picked up like I said before between the ages of naught and seven so there's a lot of stuff that you might have stored inside of you which is total head trash you don't even actually con you don't consciously believe it but on a subconscious level your inner child child still does believe it because that's your conditioning, that's your programming, and that's how you were raised. And this is everybody. This isn't like coming from people with bad families. Like we came from a beautiful family. It's everybody. Everybody has this preconditioning. And, and it could be something that a school teacher said to you. I have a really well-respected um, speaker and she has a beautiful um, uh, program that she also has growing at the moment. She was made to feel um, less intelligent most of her life uh, by some random comment that somebody said to her as a child because she had very intelligent um, siblings, older siblings, and she wasn't as technically smart as them, even though I'm sure she was, but just not from a classroom perspective. And so she was made to feel less than. And so all her life she's been battling that. And so she's had to do a ton of work on herself to get her voice out there, to be heard authentically and to feel comfortable about doing that. So 
I guarantee I could talk to any one of my clients and we could go back into their childhood and find a situation where they felt like they shouldn't have spoken up or they were felt made foolish or they felt less than, they felt, you know, not intelligent. Uh, I shared this yesterday in one of my Facebook lives was that I always thought that when you were speaking, you know, publicly, you should speak really intelligent with lots of long words and jargon and, you know, really sophisticated and quoting quotes and rattling off statistics. And I've got a terrible memory. I can I can never remember statistics, you know. And so I thought that that made me less of a presenter. And so it took me so much courage and so many years to finally get up and do my first public speaking event. And then after I did, you know, it wasn't so terrible. And I did my next one, you know, I had notes and I was speaking verbatim from my notes it must have been so boring anyway <laughs> um and then I challenged myself I actually went to Toastmasters of all things and I learned how to speak off the cuff and it was absolutely mortifying because I'm also and this comes from my childhood and growing up in a country town and it's small and everybody knows you I was caught up and I was the oldest child, so I think that's got a lot to do with it too. I was caught up massively in perfectionism. So for me, I wanted every word to come out perfectly, no ums, no stuttering, no stammering, um, just did it then, <laughs> just absolute perfection. And that is the most crippling thing. But what perfection really is, is just head trash, head trash stopping you from actually doing what you really need to do to get forward. And it's the most exceptional way to slow yourself down. It's the most exceptional way to sabotage yourself. And you don't look bad sabotaging yourself when you claim to be a perfectionist because it's just, I strive for perfection. I strive to be the best. When no, you're not, you're just slowing yourself down and you're stopping yourself from being anything when you're striving for perfection. So these are, you know, these are some pretty complex stuff. And, and one of my joys, this is what I was talking about with when I do present, I feel is that I can get to the nitty gritty of what needs to be said. I might go on a little bit too much, but I get the message out across very simply and in layman's terms so people can understand it and, and break it down to the core essence of what's really going on. And then since I finally discovered that's a gift, not a curse, I thought that that made me uh, not intelligent and not clever like some of my other counterparts but actually it makes me more real and makes me more relatable and that's my style so that's me finding my voice and speaking my truth because like I shared with you back in my 20s and early 30s I was um, not in a happy place and I didn't feel heard and I didn't feel like I had a voice in a, in a particular relationship and for a very long time and I lost my voice like I lost it I got nodules and then I actually lost it. I actually went to a doctor to get checked out for, I thought I might have had, you know, a growth on my vocal cords, on my vocal cords, you know, a really serious, dangerous growth because I was so husky and so hoarse and I could go days where I just had no voice. And it turns out it was actually, I was just in a relationship that wasn't serving me very well. And that when I left that relationship and developed my own voice and went and got some counseling and talked about that and being less caught up in perfectionism and just, just in feeling authentic and doing is that my voice came back. And then interestingly enough, this year, I think some of you might, who know me know that I actually have taken up singing again. Cause I used to be a singer. I used to be pretty good. And you know, I gave myself nodules and I destroyed any chance at having any kind of singing career, which was actually my original goal in life. So fast forward from 19 to 49. So we're talking 30 years. Like that's so sad. 30 years of inactivity doing something that I'm incredibly passionate about. But anyway, as COVID would have it, I bought myself a keyboard and started messing around on it. And my um really, really my partner at the time, James, he and I um he had a guitar and he is a songwriter. And I said, Hey, I've always wanted to write a song. Let's write a song together. And he's like, yeah, let's do it. And so we did. And, and, and we wrote a song and I sang a melody and then we sang, and I sang it, we played it together. And he, he put all the, all the, you know, he did the whole thing. He's very gifted, put the whole composition down. And we had this song. It was amazing. And it was me singing my voice. And, and it was just like, wow, I, I, where did that go? Where, what have I been doing for 30 years? Like I've got my wonderful business, which I love. I've been doing this for 21 years, but I'm a creative human being. This is part of my essence. So yeah, it's amazing. So we picked up, we wrote nine more songs. So there's 10 songs in total and we're releasing them um, throughout the year, single by single by single. And it's just incredible that it took 30 years to find my voice again, like my true singing voice, because 
it's probably one of the most vulnerable things you'll ever do is actually stand up in front of people and sing and create a song with your lyrics and your emotions based around what you're feeling and then put it out there to the universe. So it's been the most amazing exercise. And I think I'm going to do that in an upcoming um, connected podcast actually is talk to my singing teacher because I went and got singing vocal training because I needed to quickly deal with some of this head trash that I still had around being heard and being vocal. And what was amazing is I went to my kinesiologist and did this work work and cleared up a lot of things that um, was looming there at the back of the subconscious. And without going into the nitty gritty, one of the things, the two things that came up most was shame and guilt, which is incredible, absolutely incredible. And these come from childhood memories. And this is stuff that whether it even happened or not, but it was about speaking up and being heard and then may, being made to feel bad about it because you're a kid and you probably shouldn't have spoken up that was talking back or that was being inappropriate. And that can come from teachers, authority figures, that can come from your dancing teacher, that can come from your parents, friends, it can come from anywhere. And then your subconscious hangs onto this crap. And seriously, guys, if you're having trouble speaking out with your marketing and your branding and your activities, this is actually probably where it's stemming from. Somebody said something to you when you were very young and it created a belief in you that you don't even know at this age that you have it. You just have the byproduct of it, which is a fear of speaking, public speaking or being heard or having people hear your opinion. Because here's the other one is when you speak up and you speak your truth and people hear your opinion and then you're open for discussion, aren't you? You're open for somebody to actually say, I don't agree with you. Yeah, I, I think that's not correct. And then where do you stand then? How does that feel? How does that make you feel? Does that make you feel less than? Does that make you wish that you'd never opened your mouth and you're just quiet? And you think about all those times you might have put something on social media and then somebody came and assassinated you, you know, and it's just like, whoa, I'm not doing that again. Holy shit, that was awful. That felt terrible. Being judged feels horrible. And but where does that come from? You know, if you had a really sound self-esteem, you would understand that they're just coming from their perspective and they're obviously got their own hurts and their own healing to do. And they're just projecting all over you what they haven't discovered about themselves. But it takes a really secure, very confident person to feel that way <laughs> and to be confident enough to then continue speaking and having your own voice and being at the front of your business and really connecting with people as you should. And let me tell you, the reason why I'm banging on so much about this is because it's so important with creating connection in your business or your brand or the business that you work for, whatever you're doing, you need to have your authentic voice. You need to have your opinion and you need to speak up. And that is the kind of, because that's the kind of person that people want to attach to and follow, particularly when you're talking about, you know, if you've got a product to sell or services that you have, people want to be around leaders. They want to be around people that engage them and inspire them them and that they connect to and that they feel like, wow, they really, I really admire them, you know, and you're not bossing, you're, you're bossing people around, which is another thing that a lot of women are accused of, um, you know, which is terrifying, you know, in a corporate environment, you hear it referred to all the time as a, a woman is, oh, she's domineering and, and demanding or, or she's over the top or she's too, you know, she's too much. But when a guy is speaking, you know, and I don't want to, I, I don't get interested in stereotypes, but it does happen. You know, when a guy is assertive or authoritative, it's like, oh, he's a leader. Oh yeah, he's a, he's a natural born, you know, leader. He, he, he's pulling us along and he's inspiring us. But, you know, sometimes when a woman speaks out, it's the opposite, you know. So again, more head trash. If you've been raised to be the nice little girl, you just fall to shit when somebody says that you're demanding or says that, oh, my God, you just, you know, it's all about you, isn't it? Wow. You know, I had that said to me by somebody really close to me a few years ago and, and, and it floored me for, for ages. I, I, I stopped speaking up and even this past six months, you know, with COVID and everything, like it, it's a really emotional, traumatic time watching such great change in the world and people can lose their voices and go to ground as they want to go and do the inward work, which is cool. But the point is when you have a business, you need to still be available and doing the outer work so people know who you are and what you stand for and what you're doing in the world. So, 
I think I've covered enough of that. Um, I want to talk to you quickly about the connection marketing course that I've got. Well, it's not ugh, an online course. It's an online program. It's an online community, you know, and this is the stuff that we tackle in there. So yes, I teach you all of the amazing things that you need to do with content creation and getting, getting your um, message out there through the actual way that you're going to do that. But if you don't believe in yourself and understand who you are and understand that to be a thought leader, you actually need to have an original opinion that is yours based from your true experiences that you then share with your community. If you don't get the hang of that, there's, there's nothing, there's no sexy sales funnel or Facebook hack or algorithm that you can beat or video techniques that you can do that's going to beat that kind of authentic connection when you have your powerful voice and you speak it to your audience. So that's my message today is about really consider what's holding you back. And I know a lot of people balk at doing my program because it feels too intense. It's all about connection. It's all about speaking your inner truth. That's really where you got to show up and put yourself out there at the front. But, you know, if you do the work and you're prepared to really look at what's holding me back, could it just be some simple message that I got as a young kid that, you know what, I don't, I actually don't even believe that. I don't believe I should speak when I'm spoken to. I don't believe that, you know, nice girls never speak out. I don't believe that, um, I have nothing powerful to say. So when you start to really look at where you're coming from and why, it's amazing how this will change every aspect of your life. And I think that's probably one of the most powerful things too. Like Kelly, who was on the court, who was here earlier, I'm not sure if you're here now, she shared with me about what she got from doing the online, uh, the, um, hack the program was that she it improved across her entire life when she actually connected to her why, what she was doing, her purpose in life, what inspired her, what her vision was for herself and her family, what her values were, how she actually helps people and how she can impact the world so positively. Then she was able to actually connect to her message and then she found creating video was so easy writing blogs you know being exposed having a different opinion to other people and being confident enough to to communicate that even when she goes to a barbecue she used to be very vulnerable about her business she'd still you know people say oh you know what do you do and she's like oh you know i just got this little um little thing that i do on the side you know let's talk about you and you know and now she's like yeah hey i've got business it's called dairyfreestore.com you know we have products that help people and families change their life with you know lactose intolerant they don't understand all their skin conditions and she just rattles off all these amazing things and all these people that she helps because she found her inner voice and her truth and she was able to speak to that and so many people aren't able to speak to that which is so sad and it comes from some weird shit thing you probably were told as a kid and it's so easy to get rid of once you are ready and willing just to address it and then change it you know because Here's the other clanger too, guys. If you keep doing the things the way that you've always done it and you just try to push through your nerves, you try to push through, you know, what it is, the boundaries without having an innate understanding of where it actually came from. So you can actually just like go through it, sort it out, process it, and then then put it to bed, just let it go. It's always going to feel like pushing and you're always going to not you're going to fall off the wagon at some point and go back into being reclusive if that's your natural ability and then you're not going to be able to create the connection marketing with your people and, and grow your business that way. You're going to hide behind your company or hide behind the products. You know, you're not going to be the big powerful person that you can be. So that's what finding your voice means to me. It's incredibly powerful and it's just wonderful self-expression, you know, and it's, it's really having the respect and understanding that maybe not all people either actually understand your message or care for your message. And that's totally cool. It's, we're not here to convert everybody to thinking and feeling the way that you do. We're just here to have a great impact on the, on whatever part of the world we want to, whether it's small or large. And we just want to share and love and help and serve, get your good products and your good services out there and have a really great lifestyle and do that in a way where you're actually feeling authentic, that turning up every day in your marketing doesn't feel like a big fat chore and that you can just share the knowledge that you have and create as much dynamic um, dynamic energy that you can for the world. So that, 
<laughs> that's my big lofty dreams for you. It's been really great to chat to you. I hope you find your authentic voice. My challenge to you today is to really go back into your mind and think about, you know, what shitty messages were you told as a kid about being quiet and not being heard? And maybe just do some processing on that and just think, well, does that serve me now in my life? No, it doesn't. You know, am I going to let go of that belief? Yes, I am. So great to chat to you as always. And I will see you soon. This is my last official Facebook Live. I'm going to be happy to rest my voice and do a bit of processing myself on some of the things that this brought up because it always stirs up emotions. It brings up stuff for people. So brought up stuff for me too. Thanks for tuning in. I hope you found that of high value. You would have heard me talking about connectionmarketing.online throughout that. Just to give some clarity around that, that is actually an online program that I have, which is all about creating connection through your marketing, funnily enough. And that is what I'm passionate about, creating connection with humans and other humans. I apply it to a business sense, but really it should be done every day in our life, shouldn't it? So if you're interested, you can go check it out. It's connectionmarketing.online. The actual mothership course is only available a couple of times a year when I open the doors, but I have other smaller courses there if you want to look at it and some free resources too. So go check it out. And don't forget, if you like what you're seeing here, please share it with your audience because I can only grow and expand when you guys share it so that'd be really cool and if you can subscribe and let others know about the goodness that's going on here particularly if you resonate with a connected message okay have a great day and i'll see you next week on the podcast <laughs>